Good morning, everybody. I toast to you and all you. I hope you're having a fantastic morning and everything is going wonderful. I hope you had a great Mother's Day. Um, it was a good Mother's Day for me. It was busy. Um, we celebrate a lot of grandmas, so I really celebrated my Mother's Day on Saturday and I got my presents and then yesterday we spent the whole day celebrating grandmas and great grandmas, so we got a lot of grandparents, but it was a good day, so I hope everybody else had a really good day. And this morning I woke up in the parents are like, you have to make a video. The energies are like, do it now. I'm like, just got up. There's not any noise in my house. It's really quiet. <clears throat> and I wish they were like, make a video, make a video, make a video. So I got out the fairy cards. Um, but I wanted to share an epiphany I had while I was driving home. And it's one of those epiphanies that like, you think about all the time, you talk about all the time, and you're like, oh, this is a, and then you're like, wait, I have this problem. So, um, I know I've talked about fear before, but we're going to talk about fear again. Fear is like one of your biggest adversaries, and I don't think that we often realize how much that fear drives and motivates us, and part of that problem is because it like builds itself into your life. Um, I've always kind of equated it to like woodbine, the weed, uh, wild honeysuckle, ground covering honeysuckle, woodbine, whatever you call it. <clears throat> because you don't always notice it at first. It just kind of creeps in and it's there and you pull it and it creeps in and it's there and then it makes a little further even like when I was doing that Russian sage. I, find a, I found a couple sticks that had some woodbine still attached to it. I mean, I had thought I had pulled it all off before I had trimmed. I try to keep the woodbine down. But it's just one of those things that it's always there. It's constantly there. And that's like fear. Fear is constantly there. It is constantly in your business. It is constantly in your space. It is constantly rattling around in your brain. And we begin to build these coping mechanisms. And as you build more coping mechanisms, you kind of... I wouldn't say dismiss the fear, but you like build the fear into your network, into your weave. And then you don't even notice it's there. And then later you're like, wow, where is, where is this insecurity coming from? Where are these problems coming from? Where is this coming from? And, and it's fear. Fear at some point along the way made you change your coping mechanisms, made you change the way that you act, made you change something, made you do something. And then you built on top of that and it kind of built into your life you know fear of judgment fear of you know people not accepting you fear of not being loved fear of not being able to be who you are you know fear of a failure fear of all kinds of things and as i was driving home last night and i was trying to think i was like you know, where is this insecurity coming from in, you know, thinking that it's not going to, nothing is going to work out and it's just not going to work. No, stop. Stop. I said, where is this coming from? It's fear. <clears throat> fear that you're going to repeat the same mistakes. Fear of so many different things. <coughs> Excuse me. It was funny, even when I was making that video the other day. I had fear of sharing about my past lives because there's so much judgment out there and you just start to get nervous that people are going to judge you or things aren't going to work out the way that you want them to. And so you begin to compensate and do things because of fear. Now fear is one of those biological natural things that we've evolved with. It's helped humans evolve over all of this time. And just like stress, when we talk about stress and how stress has helped us evolve, but it's not needed like it used to be. So a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, as we've evolved as a species, we needed fear. We needed that flight or fight. We needed, which I actually heard the other day when I was watching something, flight Flight, fright, or freeze. Um, and I guess the freeze thing, I feel like, is a new thing because 100 years ago, if you froze, you 
But I didn't survive, so they were like, that, we're not talking about that. That's not an option. <laughs> but now, we live in a society that compensates and deals with and adjusts for, and we have tools and all of these different things to help us get over all of this, like, not get over, I guess, work around, work through all of the issues that we have. So our, our, our flight or fight or freeze is not activated necessarily like as it's needed. I'm, okay. <laughs> this is one of those things. This is a natural response that you have. But the, when we evolved to create this natural response, response, it's because we were running from bears. It's because we were freezing. It's because there were like seriously dangerous, treacherous consequences. And we had to evolve. Our bodies had to make ready, had to be prepared, had to like, uh, we have to be able to survive. But now in our modern life, when things that make us fearful are like fear of being judged, fear of, like I said before, those, those emotional fears, it's not like I'm being attacked by a bear. Um, but it's still triggering the same hormone and all of those kind of things in your brain. And so then you're like, okay, I got to do something to fix this. I got to, I got to compensate. I got to whatever. And so we begin to build those mechanisms. And then we have like this world of coping mechanisms that we've created around us. Like, like this. And we see the world like that. And it's hard to see the world like that. It's hard to see possibilities live through that. It's hard to like overcome and succeed and do things. So those blinders that we have, they're like, they start out like this. We're like, oh, I'm only going to see what I want to see. And then slowly fear is just going to give you like this full mask. And when you're in that state, again, it's hard to see the world for what it is. It's hard to see reality. It's hard to see what you need to do and what you can do and what your poss like what the possibilities are because you're like this. And you have to get rid of those weeds. You have to get rid of that fear. You have to get rid of whatever it is that you visualize your fear as. You have to get rid of it. I was doing some visualization with this in my mental temple since my magical mental temple space is underwater. It was interesting because the water got this like dark murky like thunderstorm kind of cloudy whatever and so it came in and the air the water was really murky and dark and that's when I realized that it was fear because in that moment I felt that I was like oh this is scary oh, scary scared fear and that that's what darkens your world. It's what brings you, like, and I imagine everybody has a different way of visualizing this. Everybody has a different way that they work through this, identifying it, whatever it may be. But when you start to question your insecurities and you start to question, like, why do I have this? Like, where is this coming from? Fear. What are you scared of? So, I challenge you today to think about your fears and what it is that scares you and not like, oh, I'm scared of the dark because some people are still scared of the dark. No, I'm scared of spiders. I'm not. I love spiders. But uh, actually this morning I was really annoyed that there was not a spider in my window and I had to kill a mosquito because I feel like that's the spider's job. So <laughs> like keep you in my house why are there no spider webs in this window with all these plants <laughs> uh it's funny but i'm not talking about those kind of fears i'm talking like emotional fears fears that keep you from succeeding fears that keep you from practicing your spirituality in the way that you want fears that keep you from being the person that you want it's not just in your spirituality we live in this world of judgment and this is i think one of the hardest fears to get over, to let go of, to like move forward from. Because you have all of these people around you who are telling you or showing you or making you 
Okay, wait, I have to stop. No one can make you feel anything. You are in control. The only thing you can control is your reaction to a situation. And if you say, well, this person is making me feel this way, yes, if there is someone who is physically threatening you or there is someone who is doing these things to you, yes, okay. There's a difference between abuse and behavior, I guess. I don't know what the other side of this. If you have someone new in your life who is abusive, please reach out. You can reach out to me. I will help you find help in your area. You can reach out to your local shelters. You can reach out. There are women's groups all over the place. There are men's groups. There are, men are just as abused as women. Um, and they don't get a, any credit for that because they're scared to come out and say that my wife abuses me or my spouse abuses me, whoever it is, it is my father, my parent, my brother, whoever. We're scared to come out because it shows that weakness. We're scared to be weak, and that's so silly. It takes a stronger, more secure person to be vulnerable and show their weakness than it does take someone to fake it and pretend like, I don't have any problems and everything is perfect and it's all on you. And the, growing up in a world where we have, in a society, in a place or whatever, where we're told all the time that, that you can't be weak, that you can't do these things, like you have to be strong and independent and whatever, that's not true. <laughs> like, we need each other, we need community, we need support, we need to be needed, we need to need somebody. That's part of our human nature. That's what makes us, that's what makes us communal species. Um, at no point in our evolutionary anything have humans been solitary. And I guess that's probably why it's so foreign for me when people are like, I'm a solitary pagan. I'm like, mm, you just don't have your people yet. <laughs> We're here. They're all here. Um, <clears throat> Hmm. So, again, I challenge you to think about your fears. I challenge you to think about what's holding you back. What stops you from doing those things that you want to do? What stops you from succeeding? Um, and what is it? What brain process? You know, what coping mechanisms have you built off of fear? And sometimes we don't even realize those coping mechanisms. Um, you know, here's a really random one that's not like deep and whatever <clears throat> when you're getting ready to go out of the house and you're leaving the house and you're getting dressed and you're picking out your outfit do you think about what I want to wear or do you think about what people think I should wear do you make the choice of your clothing based off of who you're going to go hang out with I know that like when I go to my in-laws house or, or when I go to business meetings or when I go wherever there's a certain like I feel like I should dress this way so that I can fit in with that group of people because I'm fearful that they're going to judge me. You know, do you wear your pentagram hanging out? Do you... So I just, <laughs> I have a pentagram tattooed on me. So anytime I wear a tank top, you can see my pentagram. And I always get caught off guard when people like, Oh, I really like your tattoo. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like I'm a giant spider web and then a pentagram. And so it's just like, <laughs> there's one of those things. So when I wear a tank top or when I go places, I have to consider that. And sometimes I forget and I just wear a tank top and I like go out and I'm doing things. And then somebody's like, oh, I like your tattoo. And I'm like, I get a little nervous in that moment. And then I have to think, why am I getting nervous? So this comes back to the epiphany I had yesterday. I'm not sure at what point over the last, I think it's when I got pregnant and started having babies and just this cha huge change in your life brings in a lot of insecurities. Um, and I think during that time period, I just had this mental shift where suddenly I was a lot more concerned. I was a lot more fearful. I didn't used to care. I used to be the person who didn't give up. And everybody knew it. And they were like, she is loud and she's obnoxious. She's going to say what she wants. She doesn't care. She's going to say, if, if you needed to hear something that you, you know, if you had a friend who needed to hear something, you brought them to me. And you were like, here's the problem. And then I was like, here's what you need to hear. 
and I didn't care who thought it would, and I just was me. I just was. And then slowly, it's, well, I say slowly, but really, I don't know. I'm still having trouble pinpointing when it went from I don't give a to I worry and fear about these kind of things, and it's uh, makes you fear. It makes you worry, like, oh, my God, this isn't going to work out, or why am I going to do this if it's not going to work out, or, you know, the bad things. My sister says, Tara, you can't live like the other shoe's always going to fall off. And that, in part, comes from being a child and, and literally the other shoe dropping and, like, the world shattering into pieces. So as a grown-up, like, I've tried to come away from that, but it it's just been an interesting shift. It's been an interesting thing that I'm trying to work through and kind of whatever in my brain. And so I... Again, I come back to, I challenge you to, what is it that you're fearful of? What is it in your life that you have changed because you're fearful? What is it that you don't do because of fear? How much fear is in your life? How many coping mechanisms have you created? And all of that stuff. So now that I've said it three times, <laughs> I feel like we can move forward. Um, I do see this as a big problem in our society and in our community and like in our world and everywhere is that fear is a big problem. We have to start questioning why we fear these things. And are you, you know, some people are fearful of people who are different and some people are fearful of being judged and for being different. Like there's just both sides of that coin. So <clears throat> where do you stand and how does that affect your life? So let me know in the comments or tell me or write it down in your journal or do whatever you need to do with that information. But fear is your adversary. Fear is going to keep you from succeeding. Fear is going to stop you from doing these things. Because we don't live in this world where, like, we're being chased by lions. I mean, some people are. We, I'm not. <laughs> I don't need the biological and chemical response when I get nervous about succeeding and, and doing a business or making these videos or whatever. I don't need my brain to be like, oh my God, there's a lion coming. Because there's not. There is, there's not. It is what it is. So. <laughs> but the fairies still want to talk. So. I have my fairies. And let's see what they have today. To say today. Oh. I'm just getting out my rock. Down. Just calm myself. With Beltane and the energy, you just, you feel the presence of spirits. You see the energy. Um, my spirit guides are more visible, I guess would be the word. I have this really tall spirit guide. And I've talked about her before. She's like a crone, dark kind of whatever energy. But right now she's really visible, and sometimes I feel like there's another person in the house. I'm like, oh, oh it's just you. It's just you. <laughs> really, fairies? Something to say right off the bat. Like, look it. They won't even. They're like, nope, 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 nope. See that? No, it says. What are you saying? Kindness. We just got to be nice to everybody have to show a little kindness. I think fear keeps us from being kind too because we're scared if we're nice to that person. You know, somebody else is going to judge us or, you know, my grandma was nice to a homeless person and now she's fearful that this homeless person is going to come back over and hurt her. And I get like, you know, it's a young girl. It's not like a, whatever. Oh, my ankle. But we get scared. We're scared to be nice to people. We're scared to do all kinds of things. And we can't let fear drive you like that. Oh, my fairies, what do you need to tell me today? You sure are chatty. All kinds of messages ready to pop out at any moment. I guess if I hold it up like this, you could kind of see how they... <laughs> Very fitting. Very fitting. Detoxification. Um... 
It just reminds me of a time I did a card reading. I got detoxification and beauty right next to each other. And it was like the fairies telling me you need to go take a shower. It's just funny. But, uh, so. <laughs> Sometimes it just strips me out. This is why I. I'll go long periods of time without doing card readings. This is why I don't do the tarot and I just work with the fairies because I feel like the energy of the tarot would be too real, too, not too, like, too much in your face. Like, bam, this is what you have to do. Um, so in identifying our fear, the next step is detoxification and removing that. And you know, I use the imagery of a garden, but you have to get out and pull those weeds. You have to remove the fear. You can't just let it sit there and fester. Um, you know, mustard seed is another good one. That's like fear is that you planted that seed of mustard. <clears throat> you planted that little bit of fear. It's been planted in your brain from being a child or from experiences that we've had. And then it just continues to grow. And that one mustard seed will take over the whole bridge. That one woodbine plant will consume your whole garden from underneath. And you don't even realize it's all one plant. And it's all coming down from this one place. But we have to detoxify. We have to remove this from our system and let... Let that cleansing take place so that you can feel better and move forward. Um, very much so. And uh, you can't just identify the fear. You can't just say, hey, I have fear. You have to see the fear and then you have to remove it. <laughs> and then they say, I'm not even looking first. Honoring your true feelings. We keep getting this one a lot. And I think that fear moves you away from your true feelings. Fear masks them and like creates this facade of what you think or, you know, should be there. And as you start to detoxify and clean away and move away all of the things that you don't need and the fear, then you begin to see the true self and you can honor those true feelings and know who you truly are and not be fearful and not uh, not hold back because of that and know like I feel like I should shuffle up here so that people you can see that it's not just like that that card just flew out of the deck I was like you need this um <laughs> I love the fairies. We're going to have to give them some good offerings today. Visualization. So I think this is like in two parts. What I'm hearing is two parts to this. So one, we visualize this negativity. We visualize this fear. We visualize the what if people judge me? What if these bad things happen? What if my fear consumes me? And we begin to visualize that. And it takes over and it becomes this dark cloud that kind of hovers over you. But if you stop and you detoxify and you cleanse and you get out the things that you don't need and you begin to honor your true self and you begin to really be present in that place, then your visualizations shift and your visualizations become positive and you begin to visualize and manifest the things that you want instead of the things that you're scared of. So there's the big thing. I remind myself all the time, I said, your brain is a very, very powerful thing. Your brain can achieve so many great things. I mean, you think about people like Wim Hof. I was just watching a documentary on him or like an interview thing where he was talking about when he swam under the ocean in the freezing ocean and he got that world record. He didn't have goggles when he did his practice run and his retinas froze. And he still completed. He did not let fear consume him. He just kept going. He visualized where he needed to be and what he needed, and he succeeded. And you see these amazing people doing these amazing things, you know, climbing Mount Everest, sitting, you know, I mean, it's just amazing things. Running through the Sahara Desert, um, like that's just how they get around. Like that's how they live their life. I couldn't imagine that. It would be so hot. <laughs> And my cushy, comfortable world, those kind of things are so far outside my norm, I can't imagine it. But people are surviving. People are doing those things, and they are succeeding. 
Uh, drop my rock. Uh, and it's because they're, so those people are succeeding because they are visualizing their success, not their fear. So when you begin to visualize, what is it that you're visualizing? Do you tell yourself, well, what if all these bad things happen? Or do you tell yourself, what if I succeed? What if everything works out perfectly? What if I have everything that I need when I need it and it all works out and then I succeed and I get to do these things that I want? What would it be next after I succeeded? So you have to shift your visualization. You have to think about your mind power and your mindset and where you are and what you're achieving and what you're visualizing and what's that manifesting. If we're always visualizing fear, then that's what we're manifesting in our life. If we're always visualizing positivity and success and grander things, then that's what we're manifesting in our life. So what are you manifesting? What are you visualizing? What do you need to detox? Well, how are you going to honor your true feelings and let go of that fear? So think about that today. And that's a heavy topic. It just is a lot. But I think that it's important, especially as we're starting this, you know, we're coming out of mid spring, high spring, Beltane, and this is the time of manifestation. That's what summer is, is when we manifest all of these things that we've been talking about and idealizing and working through and all that stuff, manifestation. So now remove the fear, detox, honor who you want to be and visualize your success. So I hope everybody has a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope that you achieve all of the great things that you visualize and manifest that positivity. So many blessings.